Mr. Holmes, this matter comes on for what we call an initial advisement pursuant to Rule 5. Deputy, if you please step back. <coughs> you have a right to remain silent. If you make any statements, they can be used against you. You have a right to be represented by an attorney. If you could not afford one of the statutory guidelines, I would appoint one to represent you at no cost to yourself. Any plea you make must be voluntary, not the result of any undue influence or coercion. The, typically, you have a right to be advised of the charges. You have a right to be <coughs> advised of the charges. The duty judge has made a preliminary determination of probable cause to believe you're committed the offense of first degree murder, which is a class one felony under Colorado law. Ordinarily, individuals are entitled to bail. Given the nature of the charges, you are currently being held on a no bond hold. You also have a right to have a jury trial and preliminary hearing to determine whether there's probable cause to believe that you're the person that committed the offense. Mr. Holmes, do you have any questions about that initial advisement? Judge, we've advised Mr. Holmes thoroughly and made a or further advisement. Thank you, Mr. King. Pursuant to CRS 18.1.10.01, we are to enter a mandatory protection order. Any violation of the protection order can constitute a new criminal offense and or contempt of court. It is the order of the court you shall not harass, molest, intimidate, retaliate against, or tamper with any witness to or victim of the acts you are charged with committing, shall vacate the home of the victim, stay away from the home of the victims, and stay away from any other location the victims are likely to be found. You shall refrain from contacting, directly or indirectly, communicating with the victims. You shall not possess or control firearm or other weapon. You shall not possess or consume alcoholic beverages or controlled substances. And as to further order the court, you are not to commit any new offenses. Ms. Pearson, if you'd approach, please. I've just signed a mandatory protection order. If you tend to a copy to Mr. Holmes and acknowledge his receipt on the record. Thank you. Ms. Pearson, ordinarily, people request 72 hours for the filing of charges. What's your request at this point in time? Your Honor, we are asking for an extended period of time. The 72 hours is simply a local rule. Rule 5 only requires it without unnecessary delay, so we would be requesting until next Monday, July 30th. Mr. King. Judge, we do not object to that. Um, if I may approach, however, I do have an application just completed if I can get your signature. You may. And, Your Honor, at that time, we will also file an amendment to the protection order that lists all of the victims in this case. Thank you. The court has signed the application for the appointment of the public defender. Public defender is appointed to set the matter for formal filing of charges this Monday, July 30th, 930 in this division. Given the nature of the charges and the likely voluminous pleadings, I'm entering an initial case management order. Has council received a copy of that order yet? Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. Pearson, do you receive a copy? Uh, we do not, Thank you. We'll make sure you get a copy. Essentially, what that's going to do in order to track the pleadings, all people's filings will be captioned with a P with a sequential number thereafter. Defense will be a D with a sequential number thereafter, and I will identify my filings or orders with a C. In that we've had some filings already, the initial case management order, which I've captioned C2, does list the orders and motions that have been filed thus far. What I'd like to do is just recap them, make sure I'm not missing anything. So far, we've got C1, which is the EMC decorum order that I issued. We've got the P1, which is the motion to seal the search warrant affidavit and orders and case file, which was filed by the people. I did grant that. We've got outstanding D1, which is a motion for access to and preservation of the crime scene, which relates to access by the defense and their experts to the movie theater. We'll address that in a moment. 
We've got D2, a motion to limit pre-trial publicity. Along with that motion, I did receive a proposed order. However, I'm inclined to go ahead and just track Rule 3.6 and 3.8 of the Rules of Professional Conduct. Ms. Pearson, the people's position as far as the pre-trial publicity motion by the defense. Thank you, Ms. Chambers. Judge, the people would ask, would ask for just that, to we track 3.6 and 3.8. Thank you. The court will be issuing the order granting the pretrial publicity. We'll make sure counsel gets a copy. Judge, does the court, there is some difference between the proposed order by the defense and uh, the actual rules? Yes, I'm not adopting the defense order. I'm crafting my own, which will track 3.6 and 3.8. Judge, the, uh, the court file has been sealed. May we distribute that particular order to you? You may. We've got the D4, which was the objection to expanded media coverage and request for hearing. I did grant the request for expanded media coverage. I've not been aware that there has been a filing for a request for expanded media coverage at this time. Last indication I had from my staff, we had not received one. How would you propose we address that once we get it? I'm assuming we're going to receive one for the filing of charges, Mr. King or Ms. Pearson? The judge, we're going to stand on our motion to object to that. If the court wishes to hold a hearing on it, we're certainly available to do that. All right. Can we do that forthwith upon the receipt of the motion? Do you have any objection to that? That would be appropriate. I that would be appreciated, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Chambers, do you have any objection to that procedure? Ms. Pearson? No. Yeah. Thank you. We do have the motion for access to the crime scene and preservation. People's position on that? No, the scene is being held and the defense will have access to the scene. When do you anticipate that occurring? I'm anticipating later this week at some point. They are not finished yet with some of the things that have to be done prior to some of going into the scene. Are you in a position to give them reasonable access with 24 hours notice? Yes. All right. Court will issue an order concerning that. Anything further on that issue, Mr. Uh, King? Just a point of clarification, Judge. My understanding is that there are two scenes, uh, one being the apartment building where Mr. Uh, where, where Mr. Holmes lived, and the second being the movie theater. We're requesting that both of those scenes be preserved and be allowed access to both of them. Did I misread your motion? Because I think your motion only addressed the movie theater. I apologize if that was the case, Judge. We filed that on the fly on Friday. So uh, we are asking, and I will amend the pleading uh, orally now and, and by in writing later. Your Honor, I assume that they also want the apartment held, and we will also make that available at the point that it is safe to go into. Thank you. For the people, is there anything outstanding? Your Honor, we filed this morning a motion regarding public access to University of Colorado records. Does the court have that in its possession? I do. If the court wishes further argument on that motion, we can provide that. Okay. Judge, we have been tendered that pleading this morning. We've had a chance to briefly review it while we reserve any right to uh, to file additional pleadings on that. Uh, as it appears right now, we would have no objection in joining the request by the people. Court of Market is T2 in accordance with my case management order. I'm going to grant that the order. If, in fact, you feel it needs to be amended or have some objection after further analysis, Mr. King, I'll let you file a motion to amend. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Pearson, anything further for you? Thank you, Mr. King. Judge, uh, we tendered to the prosecution this morning uh, defense motions 5 and 6, which are notice of indication of all statutory and constitutional rights and privileges and revocation of any and all previously given waivers or privileges and uh, motion six motion to allow confidential defense experts to be present for scientific testing of evidence um, with regard to to pleading five uh, we're just asserting all of mr holmes constitutional rights and this is just a notice of that uh, with regard to the any scientific testing 
I think that uh, we're not really at that stage yet, but we are filing this in abundance of caution if I can approach the bench. You might. Is there anything on either notice or motion for people at this time? Your Honor, we have not acknowledged notice under Defense 5 of the invitation cards. Thank you. Once again, anything further for the people? Thank you, Mr. King. I have a moment, sir. You may. No, you are. Thank you. That will be in recess. All rise.